2006, there was the mortgage implosion. All those subprime mortgage lenders started going belly up. And the economy then crashed, and we were one of the first areas to get hit hard. The banks that I had, nine or ten banks, they all collapsed and closed their doors the same week. And I had well over a million dollars worth of loans with those banks. All my commissions that I drew from were evaporated. I had no money saved. Everything that we had had and everything that we had, uh, we were lavishing in literally was just pulled from under us um, overnight. I saw a little lump on his back and I remember that cold feeling as a cold hand gripped my heart. Our 17 month old little baby boy was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma cancer. He had cancer in every bone in his body. We're the ones who are carrying him. We're the ones who are crying, confused, and wondering, God, how are we going to get through this? God, what is your will in this situation? I, I seriously believe that it could possibly be God's will for him to die, and I couldn't understand it. How could God ordain a child that is a victory child than to die at age two? I just couldn't get my head around it. people saying to us, well, God needs another little angel in heaven. Or, you know, God is trying to teach you something through this. Or God is showing you how much he loves you. We had someone actually say that because of all our years in ministry, that God actually counted us worthy now to have a child with cancer. Someone sent us a CD. Uh, I think four CDs together. And it was handwritten on it, you know, uh, God wants you well. It was like water to a parched soul. Could it be true? And the good news is not just positive thinking. It is the gospel. It is the good news of Jesus Christ, we believe. The medical profession has said to me, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 40. Your knees are a mess. Your back's, there's not a lot we can do with it. Um, and that's just the way it is. OK, so I carried on popping pills and believing what they said, going to church, people praying for me for, for some more. And in the end, to be perfectly honest, I started shying away from people praying for me. And I even stopped praying for myself because I thought, well, if this is God's will, why am I praying to God to stop it? I took my healing, I took the word, and it was planted inside me in my heart, and I knew that I was healed. And the external stuff was just distraction. So I remember waking up and seeing him on his side, and then he didn't kind of flip out onto the knees and stagger off and do all the stretches that he had to do. He kind of just got out of bed. I, thought, I just got up out of bed. Um, praise God. And that was it. There was no jumping up and down and everything. It was just, hey, just get on with my life now. And that's it. I took my healing and I received it and I was done. I was expecting a cry, but the room was quiet. And you could basically hear a pin drop in the room. There was no life in him. He wasn't breathing or anything. Junaid looked at the baby and he told me there's something wrong. And he said, Junaid, is the child breathing? I said, Pastor, no, he's not alive. And we started calling on the name of the Lord. Then we started to pray. Because I believe that if two be agreed upon this earth as touching anything that they shall ask of the Heavenly Father, it shall be done. When they said Amen, I looked at Ben and his chest literally lifted up. And he took his first breath. <laughs> they took him. And as the nurse moved him, she, they were shaking, the nurses were so nervous and they were shaking because they don't realize what just happened there. I walked over to him on the table where he was and I started praying for him. And the nurses let me do that before they moved him to the incubator. I did that, I, I prayed over him and I said, this boy is going to be 100%, he's going to be alive. So that's when Mike made an appointment with the dermatologist to have it 
checked out. And he comes in and he looks at it, and he didn't look at it for maybe five or ten seconds. He said, excuse me, I'd like to go get my colleague. Um, and then they did the doctor thing, you know, where they, mm-hmm, uh-huh, and they're, you know, with their little uh, thing probing around the edge. And they didn't say anything in front of me, but I could tell that it was kind of serious. It was just like the tumor, it just started growing out as a tumor. I remembered what the guy said, that if you let it go, it could metastasize which I, I think in layman's terms means it can just turn into something else or like mutate into some other form or go throughout the rest of my body or something. And I would always go back to, you know, I, I have to do what I feel is right in my heart and I just don't have a peace from God about getting that cut off, you know, because the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I know that's not the solution. I don't have that peace in my heart. I was made whole by Jesus Christ, and this is the only direction my body can go. Devil, you can't have me. I've already been bought.